Robert, what can you tell us uh, about the possibility of adding Aaron Rodgers? Um, to be honest, I got nothing on that one, guys. Let's see. Uh, uh, obviously, he's still with another team, so I'm just not going to talk about it. Robert, did, did you think you would had your quarterback thing resolved at this point? Yeah. Uh, you'd, you'd always like to. Yeah. Um, Takes two to tango, so it's just a uh, it's a process. We respect the process, and uh, whenever it gets done, it'll get done. What was your reaction to him saying pretty forcefully, though, that he wants to play for your team? I, I mentioned it yesterday. Um, you know, we've come a long way in two years, and uh, to have a guy of his caliber to um, and really, uh, there, there's a lot of guys off. It. You know, we've, uh, a lot of guys have wanted to come here and play, and uh, there's a lot of excitement around the organization, and it's uh, it's a cool thing to be a part of. It's um, so hopefully we can, you know, just continue moving forward and uh, capitalize on the on the momentum. When, is, when, in your mind, is the cutoff point to where you want to have your starting quarterback position solidified? Uh, um, well, as a coach, I would have said about three years ago, but uh, but you know, just that's a that's more of a Joe D question in terms of how they're approaching everything. But uh, you know, coach always wants things done yesterday. So realistically, Robert, though, if you add a veteran quarterback who you knows your system. Did he come in and training camp? Does he need to be there for the spring? Um, for sure. If there's a if there's great rapport with the coordinator, there's really no there, there's no urgency. You know, the quarterback is good if he if he understands the system. If the quarterback knows it for the you know it's just a matter of just refining skills and doing all that stuff. But uh, you know, so there's no there's no hurry on right now. Robert, did you speak with Zach Wilson after the Pat McAfee interview with Aaron Rodgers? I've been in contact with Zach uh, since the end of the season. So it's just, He's, he's, he's been great. Um, I think he's in a great uh, uh, mental state. I know he's been working his butt off uh, uh, back home, and uh, he's got a lot of things that he still has to, he wants to accomplish, and I, I, I still think that he hasn't even come close to sniffing his ceiling, and he's got a lot of room to grow, and, and we're excited to c continue working with him. How are you just preparing for the draft coming up? Are getting ready for all these workouts and stuff? How are you guys operating in the building as just for your you know what, there's, you have a system, you have a core philosophy of a system with regards to the offense, and so you're, you're really just building that system, and then whatever, whenever the quarterback shows up, whoever that might be, and obviously we're hoping that it's, you know, the, the things get done, but you, you have certain tweaks that you're going to make for that quarterback, so it's, uh, you have a base installation, and then the things that evolve off of it with regard to your players, and it's not just a quarterback, but you got to think about the offensive line that we're still kind of revamping, and and then the skill guys, you know, we just we, we just got uh, McCall Hardman, so there's going to be things that we're going to want to do with him. And there's Lazard, Corey Davis is still there, so there's there's a lot of different tweaks. But right now, OTAs is really about base fundamental installation, regardless of player. One, one of the things uh, Aaron was pretty passionate about in his uh, interview with Pat was about Nathaniel Hackett, and like you know, he passionately talked about him as a coach, not just as a guy who's friends with Aaron Rodgers. So what was it like seeing somebody to, like talk about a coach in that way? Um, no, it's. I, uh, you know, I've, I've said it before. I think he's, you know, uh, in this fast-paced world, you can be held hostage for something that happened in the immediate. But we and we tend to forget why Nathaniel was given that opportunity. He had earned the opportunity in Denver. He's a fantastic coordinator, fantastic human, an unbelievable teacher. Brings a lot of juice, a lot of energy, and uh, so his um, him being in New York is is really a, a, a good thing for us and. Uh, and I didn't think we'd even get him off the couch. He could have sat, sat home for another four years and collected a paycheck from Denver, but uh, he's excited to get after it. He's, he's already brought a lot of juice to the building, and uh, so he's, he's exactly who we all thought he's, he is. Obviously, I was with him in Jacksonville, so he's been great. Robert, if, if, the current, if for some reason the current quarterback course that you're on, the plan that you're on, does not work out, what's your fallback option? Um, I can give you Joe's number. <laughs> What's your opinion? No, I, I, I don't have one. I'd say, uh, we, we're we're grinding right now, and Joe's taking care of that part of it. You're very close to Matt Lafleur, obviously. How much have you talked to him over the years about the reality of coaching Aaron Rodgers? Have those conversations maybe picked up the last few years? Um, you know, Matt and I have been respectful with this whole process. We're really not talking about it. Um, we're still just talking about family and uh, all the different things that he and I talk about is that we've been talking about since we were. GAs together at Central Michigan, so he's uh, we've uh, agreed not to talk about it, just let it be, and let the general managers handle it. I know you just touched on it a little earlier, but how would you describe the state of where it's actually at right now between the Green Bay Packers and the New York Jets on getting a deal done? Where is it at right now? Joe D. Question. <laughs>
<laughs> I don't. I, I, you know what? Uh, I can give you my thoughts, but again, Joe's the one that's kind of working in the trenches with uh, Goody, and uh, again, he, he's the one that's handling it. I'll just let. I'll defer to him. Robert, he's been kind of the way that Brady described it, like the, the trajectory that you guys are on in the quarterback situation. Is there any doubt in your mind that it's going to go through? Well, you guys know me. I'm a, I'm a positive thinker. Uh, I'm sure eventually they'll figure something out. Robert, the changes at um, wide receiver, is that something you guys prioritized in the offseason? Do you want to make changes in that way? Um, you know, just opportunity presents itself. You know, uh, Obviously, with a, a guy like Alan Lazard, he's he's so big, so strong, so physical, tremendous red zone target. Just adding him, um, especially with what we want to do in the run game, with bringing in Car uh, Keith Carter uh, uh, from Tennessee and their uh, the system that they run. Um, you know, there's familiarity with Corey, so he can still do what he does. And then uh, when, with the opportunity presenting itself, didn't think we'd be able to get a guy like Nicole Hardman. And uh, you know, so when he was sitting there and just the, the the amount of speed and the different things that he does, it was just a no-brainer for Joe to, uh, for us to add him. And uh, and then obviously once that happened, there was a lot of different phone calls for Elijah, and not that we were ever shopping him, but uh, obviously Joe was was given something that he felt was was really really good, and, and he took it. So um, overall, it's you you go in with a plan, but sometimes you just got to be ready to pivot. Did Elijah? Um, yeah, there's there's always going to be interest with any great player, obviously, but um, things have to work out. Obviously, there's a there's a whole lot of different things. And again, it's, uh, I apologize, I'm deferring to Joe a lot, but those are things like when, when you start talking money and all that stuff, it just it becomes something else. So that's, again, something I'd have to defer to Joe. Robert, you guys signed Alan Lazard, who similar in a lot of ways in skill sets to Corey. You mentioned Corey a couple of times. So you still, you still think Corey's going to be a part of this team? Like, is that something that you want to see? For sure. You know, he's... Um, Corey's a big, solid receiver. He's done a lot of really good things for us in two years, and uh, um, definitely something that somebody that we want to keep in his leadership, his work ethic, um, the way he approaches every day. Absolutely. Why? I mean, you have some pretty good receivers on the roster now. Odell hasn't played in over a year. He's got two ACLs. Why? Why the interest? Uh, you know, it's ACLs nowadays. It's like a uh, th those are easily fixable. But uh, he's been a fantastic receiver in this league. Um, everything you hear about him, he's, he's a phenomenal person. But uh, again, it's just something that uh, you know you're always going to look over, uh, turn over every stone, cross your T's, dot your eyes, just make sure you're 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 not missing an opportunity at a great player. And it's there's no guarantee anything will happen. But um, to go in there and talk about it, and again, if Joe's had other conversations, that's again for a Joe conversation. But we're always going to study every player on the market um, to make sure that we're not missing out on an opportunity to add a good player. How, how much of that is Rodgers? I mean, we know that they have a friendship, and he made it clear. That, you know, yeah, he's. Uh, you, you know, again, we before any of this even came up, you're given a free agent list from from our scouting department, and Joe, and and he's part of that free agent list. And you go through and you study every single player, and so all these all these thoughts and uh, ideas are formulated well before any of this happened. And uh, you know, so you study it, you look at it, you, you, you try to formulate a plan to, to build a team that complements one another and uh, so hopefully that answers your question. Robert, what did you like so much about Lazard? Was it just like, I mean, the guy gets down the field and blocks? Yeah, he's, I mean, if you um, if you see him in person, the guy is just a, a you know, enormous person. He's got He's got good ball skills. He's really good target in the red zone. He's uh, from everything I've, I, and, and again, I'm, I'm one of those guys who just loves guys who, who come from from the bottom and have made his way up. And, uh, you know, I've always made the comment that you want to be careful who you give your money to in free agency because they, a lot of complacency can st uh, set in. He's a guy that's kind of scratching clawed his way through, and you're just very confident that if you give him that money, he's only going to get better. It's similar to DJ Reed, you know, another guy who was scratching clawed. You weren't afraid to give him the money because you knew he'd capitalize on it. And, uh, so with Lazard, there's a lot of different things he does very, very well. And uh, but his leadership and his mindset and his grind is uh, uh, hopefully going to continue to flourish. We're in a position where you're going after free agents, you're going to win. Right now, it's kind of a different position than you've been in the past. What What is your What is it like to be in that position? And what is your future? Give me the beginning part again. I'm sorry, you know, but veteran free agents can help you win that right now. Like, for sure. Yeah, we like to be in that position. What's your pitch to 
Um, you know, we're, so we're young roster, very young roster, so it's okay to add a few veterans. And to be honest with you, we've, um, you know, we've actually added, the, the guys we've added are pretty young. And, uh, um, but you always want to have that mixture of really good, solid veterans who've done it the right way, who still continue to work, who appreciate this and love the process at, from rehab and all that stuff. Uh, working out, meetings, practice. Um, so you always want to build that mixture of, of veteran leadership along with that youthful uh, youthfulness of athleticism and juice. Robert, with, with, uh, with Elijah, is there any I don't know, frustration that you guys were able to make work with him? Because that's when you drafted him, you had pretty high hopes for him. And, you know, I know you got an uh, you guys like him after two years he's done. Now, so I'm, like, is there some, some level you wish it worked out a little better than it did? Kind you, of like, you always do. You always look in the mirror. If it doesn't work out with a player as a coach, you just want to – you just always go back and just try to figure out what went wrong, what could have been better. But Elijah had a really good second half of the year last year. I know that you know everyone's going to talk about the first half with the trade demands, but he's a he's a tremendous young man. Uh, works his tail off. Got a lot better as the year went on and uh, regained all his speed and you know, was very productive for us. And uh, so there's no doubt. I, Cleveland got a really good receiver and uh, he's going to be he, he's going to be good there for a while. Robbie, you talked about wanting to keep the defense together. We'll keep we'll keep looking. Um, like I told Joe, you, you know we still have Quinn. And he's pretty good, and uh, you know so you, we want to add those pieces. And you know Sheldon Rankins, phenomenal football player, did a lot. You guys know how much I love Shep uh, going to New Orleans and getting what he got. Uh, really excited for him, but uh, we'll be all right. We'll figure it out. Robert, you were very young the first two years. Feels like since you got here, this is the year you've been pointing to. Year three. Building it the first year. Is the expectation this year playoffs? Well, the expectations every year, I feel like, are always that every team win a championship. And, um, you know, so the, to, to put, you guys know me, I'm not going to put mandates or expectations. I'm, we're always expecting to win. We're always expecting to, to go as far as we possibly can. But once you set expectations, well, what, what now? What now is the moment? And so we just got to stay focused in the moment, find ways to get better. You like uh, maximize every single day that we have, and whatever happens, happens. And uh, felt like we got close a year ago. Um, obviously, the back half of the year didn't go the way we wanted to, but uh, we've got a really good group, and uh, we're excited about the season. And uh, and hopefully, everything pieces together the way we wanted to. Robert, uh, you added Chuck Clark to the offseason. Let's talk about what he brings to the defense. Chuck, another one of those guys, just freaking loves ball, eats it, lives it. Um, got a tremendous mindset to him. Uh, fights through pain, fights through injury. The guy's got a Iron Man streak. I don't know what it is, over a thousand plays in a row or something like that. Uh, just a, an, a, an incredible talent, uh, tackling machine. So um, he's getting into a safety room that we're really excited about. Um, I think Jordan's going to be a lot better playing in the second year in the system. Um, and so we got some young guys that, uh, with Ash and Davis and uh, TA. Uh, they'll hopefully they'll take another jump. So it's a really good group. He's going to add veteran leadership to that group. And again, he's he's coming from a championship organization to bring that championship mindset. And uh, uh, we'll see if we can how do you, grow up. How do you feel about where you guys are at at center right now? I know Connor's a free agent. Never really had. I guess you had Bush last year. Yeah, there's a. Um, Obviously, it's a position we want to continue to address the entire offensive line. We still want to address and make sure that we're maximizing that group. And uh, uh, again, those are things we're studying. They're still still looking at all the free agent lists. We're going through the draft to look at what's available. And uh, and so we'll, it's there's still some work to be done. Are you guys coaching staff? Ben Jones is one of the best free agents out there. He's got connections on the second floor. Yeah, for sure. Again. The, Part of the free agent list that we're all looking at, and just making sure that we're crossing all our T's down our eyes. Um, same question. Uh, are you guys meeting with Calais Campbell later this week? Uh, you know what? Um, I haven't talked to Joe on that one yet. If if, uh, if Joe reported that one, or if, uh, if anyone, if it came from us, and we are, but uh, I haven't I haven't met. But he's again somebody that uh, with our D tackle having two spots available, uh, uh, somebody that we definitely talk to. How do you how do you look at your tackle position right now? Because you have three guys there with Dwayne, Kai, and Max, who are all coming off injuries and you know, become significant. Yeah. I, so, are, are you counting on two of them? Or are you? I mean, how do you, how do you approach that? You know, Mac. Uh, I'll start with Dwayne. Um, I got to start drinking the water he's drinking because I have no idea how he's uh, rehabbing and progressing the way he is. He looks fantastic. I see him in the weight room every day. Freaking love that dude. Um, Makai. 
I mean, I know he's posting videos. He's, I mean, he's, he looks he looks good, man. But uh, so he's doing all the right things. His, his mind's in the right spot. And then Max, uh, very confident that Max will uh, come back fully healthy and ready to roll. So um, again, we're we're still looking at that group and making sure that we cross our T's, dot our I's. There's still the draft. There's still free agency and. Uh, so we'll continue to grow off it and our, our, uh, continue to study all of it and uh, uh, make sure that we're making the best decisions for the organization. Yeah, Robert, last year at uh, joint practices, Zach had a lot of lengthy conversations with Aaron just about you know, quarterback and life of quarterback in the NFL. What can those conversations do for a young quarterback in their growth, especially in the experience during training? You know what? Um, I think uh, I think anytime you have a young kid, not just a quarterback, and and you have veteran leadership in that room. Uh, it can only help them, especially if the if that that the veteran is a is the type of guy that you're you're trying to follow. The guy that comes in early, the guy that takes care of his body, the guy that eats right, rehabs, does all the right things, and because uh, it can go the other way, where you're looking at the veteran a veteran leader who's kind of made it in the league, but he's really doing the bare minimum. We well, can because he's kind of gifted, where you know it can can lead some of these young guys astray. So. If you have the right leadership in there, and uh, and a veteran and a and a young guy has has a chance to ha attach to that veteran's hip, then it's it can only help. Is Zach your, definitely your number two? As of now, for sure. And uh, he's we're, again, like I said, he's we're really excited to work with him. I want to make sure I rephrase that when I said as of now. I know that's going to be the headline, <laughs> but he he's our he's our. You're quick. I know. Just tweet it out no. yourself. He's our quarter, he's our number two. Uh, you know, he's. We're, we're really. I, I really still think Zach has a future in this league to be a really good quarterback. I really do, and uh, uh, he's. He has the work ethic. He has. He has the mindset, and he's coming in here to attack it. And uh, but. Um, but yeah, we're counting on him to, to be a, a fixture here for a while. Uh, speaking of that, uh, Mike White ended up going to the Dolphins too. Let's talk about how different it'll be to see him in the Dolphins uniform along with Braxton Berrios and. Dan as well. No, he's, uh, I, you, you guys know, I, I love my, uh, uh, Mike, Braxton, and Feeney, uh, three guys that, that represent what you want, you know, with the mindset, the attitude, the, uh, the commitment to the organization, their work ethic, all of it. And um, But to see them in a different uniform, you kind of get used to it after being so many years in the league. Um, we're all renters, as they say, so uh, we all come and go. Robert, the time you, since you've sat down with Juarez has been on Twitter, the trade. Uh, <laughs> seriously. Is it, is that, no, Lamar. Oh, Lamar. Is that an avenue that, that, that all interests you? Uh, he's a heck of a quarterback, but uh, again, we're, that, that'd be more for Joe. Robert, you, you talked you talk a lot about the young four. You guys haven't been as active in the free agency as the past year. I'm curious, how much of that is you want to see these guys get a chance to keep growing and stay in the role? It, it is. We're, in. For sure. We're, we're excited about the group that we have. You know, last year our defense. Um, for the most part, we're bringing them all back. We still need to take care of our D-tackle positions. But uh, offensively, you know, we love Garrett Wilson, uh, love Corey Davis, love, uh, you know, the two additions that we made with uh, uh, Lazard and McColl. And, and there's a bunch of young guys. You know, hopefully Mims come, uh, takes another step forward. Um, Irv takes a step forward. So there's some young guys back there that uh, we're, we're excited to see grow from the receiver standpoint. And running back-wise, I Expecting big things from Michael Carter. I, I know he had a, a down year a year ago, but I, I think he's got a chance to come back strong. Um, it usually happens where year three is the trigger for those young guys. And um, obviously, Bam finishes uh, season strong, get Ty Johnson back, and then Brees looks fantastic. So we just have a really good mixture of young guys right now that we're excited to grow and uh, continue to work with. And, and, and we'll, we'll fill, the, fill the needs where, where necessary. You guys have obviously done a lot of joint practices here. I'll get you next. Plan on doing more joint practices this year? Like, yeah. I know you said with the Giants. Like the For one. sure. There's. Um, we'll see how the schedule comes out. Um, planning. Uh, you know, we got the Hall of Fame game week one, and then we have a week two, um, depending on who that is. Hopefully, that's our. Uh, that's a, a, a situation where we can have a joint practice. I, I, I'll speak for Joe on this one. You know, pass rushers, uh, they, they don't grow on trees. And uh, Carl has a uh, commodity in this league that's uh, uh, gold. 
and uh, so he's he will be here as long as he can as long as he can walk and play and rush the passer and, and affect it the way he does. He'll be here. Robert with um, ABT, he showed his versatility last year before he got hurt. Is he back at right guard now? Is that the spot where? He can uh, hopefully, yeah. We I, we definitely we think he's an All Pro caliber right guard, and uh, I think he can be a heck of a heck of a tackle too. But uh, he is an elite guard, uh, somewhere where we would love to keep him. Can you describe what it's? I mean, you're in a weird spot with the Rogers situation because you think you think you have your quarterback, but you don't officially, and there's really not much left in free agency, and so you're really out of options. I'm wondering, as a head coach, what kind of emotions, what kind of anxiety level you have because you're this far down the road, there's pretty much no turning back, and yet you still don't have him yet. So, as, what's the anxiety level for the head coach? Um, I, honestly, I'm, I'm not hitting the panic button. Um, it's uh, there's. You know, it is. You, I, I've talked to you guys about it before. I, I worry about the things I got control over. That's something I have zero control over. So I'm just going to focus my energy on the things that I do. And um, you know, it is what it is. It's. Uh, I'm confident. I think I. You know, that things are going to work out. You guys know me again. I'm. A, I'm. I'm a very positive person and optimistic. So I'm confident that things will go the way we were hoping. But. Uh, but at the same time, it's not going to. It's not going to eat at me. I think. How would you describe your meeting? Oh, uh, it was great. You know, I'll uh, I'll keep the conversation to the sanctuary of his own home, but uh, but uh, thought it was really good. You know, I'm, I'm I'm kind of intrigued by it. I'm not gonna lie to you. Just uh, to get away from uh, cell phones and I love you kids. You guys know that I love all of you. But seven day, four days of just sleeping at. <laughs> It's got some pluses. You did say on the McAfee, McAfee show that you were pretty intrigued by that. Well, I was just yeah. curious, you know. Yeah. You just, um, um, you know, it, it's easy to, to, to mock something that's different. Um, you know, that's that's kind of the trend but, or whatever it is in this day and age to, to mock something that's a little bit different. But uh, when people do things that are different, it's I'm more fascinated by it to, to figure out exactly what it is to see if there's something I can learn from. So. Robert, you, you talked about how, uh, you know, you've had – players like wanting to come to the Jets and how that was, you know, that's a sign of like things are going in the right direction. Is this like what you had as your vision when you came here like by year three when people are going to look at the Jets as like, you know, not the same old Jets? Yeah, uh, you know, you, the the idea is to, you know, when I, I'm opening a press conference, the, the plan is to win multiple championships. And um, so, yeah, to, to, to scrub the the uh, the dirt off the organization and, and to help along with Joe and our coaching staff and all the players that are in the locker room and everybody that, that, that walks through that. But there's a lot of really good people in that facility. And uh, to, to change the narrative, to change the view of the organization, um, that's always the vision. And, and the only way you can do it is with winning. And I feel like we're going on the right track. I know it didn't finish where we wanted to a year ago, but uh, I think there's a, a lot of excitement on what we can be. And, uh, you know, we just got to continue this off uh, attacking this offseason. Hi, Robert. Uh, I just asked Matt McDay about the state of the AFC East, and he pretty much said iron is going to sharpen iron, and oh, that's yeah. going to help you like, play on. How, what is your assessment on how the division has gotten better? It seems like Miami's facing Buffalo still there, and then you still have the Patriots too as well. You know, I feel like, um, you know, when I first got in the league, I was in Houston with Peyton Manning, and Tennessee was rolling, and Jacksonville was really good. And then I go to the AFC or the NFC West, and it's Seattle and San Francisco, and, and Arizona was really good. And then I go to Jacksonville again, and it's the same thing. You got uh, Indianapolis had, uh, who's the other quarterback? Andrew, Andrew, Luck. Andrew Luck, and Tennessee was still rolling, and uh, Houston just got Deshaun Watson. Then I go back to the NFC West, and it's arms race, race again with Seattle, San Francisco, and the uh, Rams. So I think I'm used to being in divisions that are absolute uh, ball busters, if you will, but um, but it's fun, you know. It's uh, it makes it it makes it competitive, and uh, um, you know that if you can survive your division, you can survive. Them. There's been some conflicting information on just how interested, if at all, you guys are in Zeke Elliott. So, can you clarify that for us? We love our running back room. I'll leave it at that. Hey, Coach Nice and Love, can you tell me what charities and costs your cash is about? You know, my wife, uh, God bless her, she has a charity, Sanat Stars, that uh, is uh, focused on attacking uh, and helping those who have been sexually abused, uh, children who have been sexually abused. And uh, so she's working on that thing with seven children every single day. And uh, I'm proud of her. She does such a good job with it and uh, uh, something that I support greatly. Thank you. Thank Robert, you. Um, 
coming off the first year and the defense was 32nd, obviously you guys knew you had to make changes. How different is it when you're coming off the season when you're fourth? You, what's the analysis like in terms of do we just make no changes because you're fourth, or do you, are you still tweaking everything and changing the scheme and things that kind of stuff? We're trying to find ways. Uh, you, you're always going to add to the scheme. Again, maintaining our philosophy. You know, we've. We look at we look back at the second half of the year. We got to get the ball. Uh, the second half of the year, we weren't able to get the ball and takeaways. And I know we attack it. I know we're we're trying to disrupt it the best we can. But uh, to set up short field, score on defense, um, find a way to draw the ball loose. I think we saw the third mo most runs uh, in the league a year ago. Which again, it's hard to get the ball out on running play. You want to be able to get some interceptions and all that stuff. And um, but we're, we'll be a lot better. We're looking for ways to close the door. Uh, how can we be better when an off, when our offense scores to slam the door shut on the uh, on the opposing offense? And uh, so there's things that we got to get better, some things that we're going to focus on. And again, you're always going to try to evolve your scheme to, to match what's happening around the league. And uh, uh, so it's something that we'll be always always trying to evolve. Right, we're speaking with Garrett, how do you think he can benefit from a better quarterback? Um, I think everyone can be, uh, uh, benefit from a better quarterback. You know the. Um, when, when you're a young guy playing and you're, you know, the, the young guys make mistakes and, uh, and to be able to work with a veteran who can get you steered in the right direction and not just for his group, but you look at, at what Garrett has now with Lazard and Corey, he's got McCole Hardman coming in who's also a veteran, so, you know, he's got a lot of really good veteran talent around him and, and the same thing goes for Mims to, to see these guys, uh, these veterans and uh, same thing with all the other young guys we have at receiver, so, um, just being surrounded by veterans, whether it's a quarterback or somebody in your own room, is always beneficial. Robert, you uh, just talking about scheme on, on offense. Obviously, my coaching staff looks a little different. You got Todd Down and Keith Carter, Daniel Hackett, new quarterback, actually. Like, uh, where, where are you at in terms of constructing that scheme to maybe look a little different last year? And how would you describe what you want that offense to look like? For sure. You know, it's um, the good thing is there's going to be some carryover. Yeah. Obviously, Nathaniel has his spin on it and uh, on, on his variation, but. Uh, uh, excited about the group. Again, there, there are a lot of changes, so there's going to be uh, some some growing pains, if you will. But uh, but excited about the group. Excited about the mindset. And um, you know, with the way things are going, I'll have better answers for you in OTAs. But uh, just love the direction that they're going right now. What do you feel like Hardman adds to the offense? Gas. Uh, he is. I know he ran a four three, but he plays four uh, three. He's got elite elite field vision with the ball in his hands. Uh, I think he's second in the NFL in Yak, uh, behind only Debo Samuel. Um, he can blow the top off the coverage. Uh, it is very easy to get him the football with regards to jet sweeps and screens and bubbles and all that, but he's, I also, I, I think he's an underrated route runner, uh, something that we're going to try to help him get uh, a lot better at, and I think he's got a lot of, he still has a lot of juice and a, a heck of a higher ceiling to reach um, as we develop the intermediate route running skills of his, and uh, um, but he's, again, one of those guys, if you can just get the ball in his hands, he's, he's going to make something happen. Do you allow yourself, you allow yourself to get excited about the quarterback, or are you more like, I don't want to talk about it until whatever officially happens? Um, yeah, you're, you know, you obviously you're, you're, you're imagining a world that you have a quarterback, uh, but you just got to stay focused in the moment and, and focus on the things that you've got control over and, uh, and continue to work in the direction that you want with regards to the install and all that stuff. So, about a minute left. What's your opinion on the, um, the sneak play? The Eagles popularizing the playoffs with the, with the, the push. quarterbacks. Um, with the push, it's kind of coming as long in. as no one's getting hurt, I don't. It's a uh, it's a cool little play they got going, and I'm sure you're going to see 32 other 31 other teams doing the same thing. How about defending it from a defensive perspective? Um, it's hard. They do such a good job, you know, just getting so much push. You saw, I, I, just watching the Niners game, when they had a couple of them, and, you know, I got so much respect for that Niners D-line and, um, you know, the amount of push that they were still generating. Uh, it's a heck of a little deal, and, you know, I know they got a bunch of plays off of it, so um, it's a good, it's, it's a cool scheme that they exploited. Robert, this one's a little, a little out of left Have you guys heard at all from Mark Johnson about you guys being <laughs> That's a highly question. <laughs> uh, um, no, no, it's um, we're eligible. We're eligible. We're eligible. But uh, <laughs> you guys, I'm a coach, man. I want to. <laughs> but I'll leave that one alone.
Um, no, we're there again. He's part of the free agent list that we all studied. But uh, when you look at Brees and uh, Ty Johnson and Michael Carter and uh, Bam Knight, the guys that we have in that room, we're really excited about the guys we have. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thank you.